This is Bishop Dale Broder. Thank you so much for joining our YouTube channel today. If this is a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to like it and then click the subscribe button and then turn on notification. Hit that little notification bell so that you never ever miss another one of our videos. And then if you're in the Metro Atlanta area on a Sunday, check out one of our exhilarating services at 8.30 a.m., 11 a.m., or 6 o'clock p.m. Our scriptural lesson today comes from the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning with first verse through the fourth, reading from the modern English version of scripture. Notice there these words, and Jesus passed by. He saw a blind man from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but it happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. I'm speaking from the subject today of the power of today. The power of today. The power of today. Today is all that you have to be able to do whatever God has called you to do. It's just today. You do the part that you need to do today and tomorrow will take care of itself. But it is being able to engage the moment right now that we're in, the, the life where we are. It's, it's being able to be in the moment. Because when you're not in the moment, you, you begin to miss the moment. And the truth of the matter is this, is that life is a collection of moments. It's just a collection of moments. You, you keep collecting moments as you live. There was a Life Builders Creed that was written by Dale Witherington. And uh, this is just an excerpt from it that says, Today is the most important day of my life. Yesterday, with its successes and victories, struggles and failures, is gone forever. The past is past. Done. Finished. I cannot relive it. I cannot go back and change it. But I will learn from it and improve my today. Today, this moment, now, it is God's gift to me and it's all that I have. And that's what we are today. This is all that we have. There is something about engaging the power of today. It's the only time that you have to be able to make a difference. I can't make a difference yesterday. I can't make a difference tomorrow, not right now. The only thing that I can do is to use the moment that I have called today, the power of now. Everything that we read in history is a result of what happened using the power of today. While it was day, and let's notice that there are certain things that can only be done while you have light, understanding, strength, capacity, awareness. That's what light is. It's like an age of enlightenment where God turns on the light. When I know what to do, now I can do it. When I know where to go, now I can speed there. Have you ever awakened in, in the middle of, of the night in a hotel room and you don't exactly know how to get to the bathroom. You know where the bathroom is at your house. But when you're traveling and you're in a strange foreign environment, you don't just get up in the nighttime in pitch blackness and run to the bathroom because all it takes is a piece of furniture <laughs> and your bare foot, your toe hitting it some kind of way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So when you don't have vision and, and clarity of vision, if you don't have enlightenment, you have to creep when you get up in the night. But the moment that light comes, you can accelerate. You can move rapidly when you can see where you're going. So Jesus says, I must work the works of him while it is day because the night is coming when, when no one can work. It's, it's engaging the power of the daylight. 
And it, it used to be back in the day before we had electricity. Things shut down when the sun went down. I mean, you worked only a half a day from sun up to sundown. That was the half a day. And so you worked, and when the lights went out at night, you went to bed early back in the day. Because what else could you do? You were in the dark. I know you had kerosene lamps and candles and different things like that, but for the most part, you, you went to bed when, when the sun went down. You, you, had, you eat and you went to bed. You, you couldn't watch television, they didn't have electricity. You, 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 you ate your meal, you went to bed. And this was the power of just being able to do what you could do in a day. The day was over by the time the sun went down. And so he says, I must work the works of him who has sent me while it is day because night is coming when no one can work. So I've got to do it while I'm, I'm in this in this space called today. It's an interesting fact that we would say that we're busy as a bee because bees are always buzzing around doing things, making their honey, you know, honey bees make their honey and bumblebees buzzing around. But did you know the interesting fact is, is that bumblebees and honeybees cannot fly at night. They cannot fly in darkness. If it all of a sudden becomes dark, if you have anybody who's raising honeybees, if you throw a sheet over their cage, over their nest, they'll immediately drop to the ground. Because they use rays from the sunlight to orient, orient themselves in flight. They can only fly at daytime, in the daylight. If, if a bee needs to move at night, he has to crawl. They crawl, creep at night, but they fly in the day. And whatever God has given you to do, you take the wings and fly, oriented by the sunlight. My, when God gives us light, and this is why he says, arise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, the glory of the Lord, and light is to be able to destroy the unfruitful works of darkness. And, 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 the darkness never wins over the light. The light, without exception, scatters the darkness. That's why he's saying to the church, arise, shine, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. No wonder the world is so dark because all of us who are light bearers have a light in the closet. But he said it ought to shine so that people can see your good works. Jesus said, I must work the works of him who has sent me while it is day because nighttime is coming. When no one can work, but God says, I'm going to turn the lights on so you can see what you're doing. When you work in the light. You work in the light and walk in the light as he is in the light. Have fellowship with one another and then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It's amazing if you just walk in the light. And so we don't have a whole lot of time. I think that there is a, there's a prophetic alarm that is going off. That is letting us know that it's time now to turn on let your light shine because the works of darkness are proliferating in the earth and God says I need some light bearers to turn their lights on and to roll their sleeves up and to go to work and do the works of Jesus. We're sent here not to just look cute, we're sent here to be able to do the works of Jesus. If you've ever told God, use my mouth, use my hands, use my feet, Jesus, use me. He's looking for a body that will say, Lord, use me for your glory, Lord. I dare you to give God permission to use you, to think through you, to create through you, to move through you, to have his being through you, to prophesy through you, to lay hands on the sick through you, to cast out devils through you, to raise the dead through you, to cleanse the lepers through you, to open the eyes of the blind through you. Jesus.
Jesus was at a critical time in history because they had healed of the blind folks, but nobody else had healed a blind person who was born blind. And Jesus said, I'm getting ready to do something in this season that nobody has ever seen before. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, you've been blind from birth. You've never seen a move of God since you've been on the earth. You've never seen the genuineness of God. You've never seen the power of God. You've never seen the deliverance of God. You've never seen the healing of God. But I'm telling you, you're getting ready to see something in this day, in this hour. Now is the day. This is the Lord's day. The day of the Lord is at hand. It is at is at hand. And we got to work the works while it is day because night is it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Touch somebody around you, tell them it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But light penetrates darkness. Darkness has to back away whenever light comes. You never find darkness creeping into a room where light is. You always find uh, the, the, the light scattering the darkness. Light goes into the darkness and says, get out of here. I got something to do in this room. Notice what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 27, and then 31 through 34. Jesus says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? So don't worry about these things, saying what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. So notice what he says to us. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and live righteously and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. He will give you everything you need. He will give you everything you need, not everything you want. He will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring, bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. You need to learn how to book in your days so you don't bring the drama that happened yesterday, the hurt that happened yesterday, the offense that happened yesterday, the pain that happened yesterday, the mistakes that happened yesterday. Book in your day. Book in your day. Book in your day and say, no, 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 this is the day. Today, today, not yesterday, God, but thank you for delivering me. That's why at nighttime you ought to book in that day and say, Lord, I thank you for your grace to get me through another day. When you wake up the next day, book in that day. Say, Lord, this is another day for new opportunities coming my way. Help me to be able to see them so I can seize them. I can't wait to see, God, what you've got in store for me today. Somebody that I'm supposed to meet today. A partner that's supposed to be a good lookup and a good hookup in my life today. Today, 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 I get better in my health and in my condition. Today, my knees are better. Today, my hips are better. Today, my eyes are better. Today, my hearing is better. Who am I talking to in this place? Every day, every day, every day, every day. Let expect God to do something every day that this day, Lord, this day, book in it, yesterday is over. I cried my last tears yesterday. This is a new day. I want everything that God has for me today, 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 in this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus taught us to pray that way. Give us this day our daily bread, our daily bread. That is the basic necessities of life to be able to be sustained. He didn't say all of your wants. He didn't say all of the, the special kind of stuff. You can't be set, uh, trying to uh, point out to God exactly what you want. You can't tell God that you want you a Bentley and you want a Lamborghini and a Ferrari and all of this kind of stuff. That's not a need. You need a pocketbook, but he didn't say that he was going to get you Louis Vuitton and Gucci. He 
He supplies all of our need according to his riches and glory. Now you can have that. I'm not saying that, that you can't have it, but I'm just saying the need. You see, when the Bible says, God said, the psalmist in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That word in the original Hebrew does not mean that God will make it to where you won't ever want for any, anything. In the original Hebrew, it says that you will never be left completely empty. That God is saying, I'll give you enough to be able to sustain, to be able to be sustained. Have you ever gone through a season in your life and you look back and you can't even figure out how in the world you made it with the money that you made? That's what he's talking about. That I led you, I led you. I was with you in that season of your life when you were so emotionally overwhelmed because some of you, you lost somebody close to you, a son, a daughter, a brother, a sister, a mother, and a father. But the Bible says that when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will scoop me up. He'll, he'll bring me now and he'll take care of me. He'll bring me to, to other mothers and fathers. Are you listening? When you don't think you can go another step, I'm telling you, God's going to give you everything you need. He'll give you everything you need. I'm just telling you, we're in a new day now. We're in a new day. We're in a new day. We're in a new day now. My friend, Dr. John Maxwell, wrote in a book called Today Matters of some 12 different things that, I, that he calls the daily dozen. And I, I think that they're worth sharing with you of that you ought to just reflect on every day, every day, every day. In the daily dozen, here they are, attitude, attitude. These are not in the order of priority, but it's just a list of the daily dozen. Every day, you ought to be able to choose and display the right attitudes daily. Priorities, priorities. You ought to have priorities. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first, get, have your priorities in order. Determine and act on important priorities daily. Your health, every day you've got to make decisions concerning your health. To know and to follow healthy guidelines daily. Daily, daily, daily. Now you can't just eat any kind of way you want and live any kind of just lay around and not move and keep yourself active. You gotta have health. You gotta get moving and you gotta put the right things in your system, put the right kind of fuel in your tank. Uh, family, family, communicate with and care for my family daily. You have to do something with your family daily. Thinking, thinking, practice and develop good thinking daily. Commitment, make and keep proper commitments daily. Finances, finances, earn and properly manage finances daily. Your faith, what are you going to do about your faith? Deepen and live out my faith daily. Your relationships that you initiate and invest in solid relationships daily. Your generosity, plan for and model generosity daily. Your values, embrace and practice good values daily. And your growth, your desires and experience improvement daily. Desire and experience improvements daily. So take these things and, and let them be a part of your daily dozen. Like what am I doing about my faith today? What am I doing about my family today? What am I doing about my commitments today? What am I doing about my values today? What am I doing about my relationships today? What am I doing about my growth today? What are those things that you're going to do today, today, and every day? And it's when you build them up consistently over a period of time that you become awesome. It is consistency that makes Average become mastery. Consistency. 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 You just keep doing it consistently. You'll get stronger by the day. Every week you'll be better. You, you'll be able to jump a little higher. You'll be able to lift a little more. You ought to, I mean, once you master something, add 1% onto it. And just keep on adding that 1% onto it. Every week, you know, just, just add another 1% on it. Just little by little, little by little, but just be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Don't go in and try to impress the whole world lifting everything all at one time. You're going to throw something out. You're going to strain something. You're going to break something. Do it little by little and gradually increase it. You become a master, but you master that thing that said, I need to do what I need to do for today. This is the regimen for today. Follow your, your daily regimen. That's a part of your daily bread. Give us this day, our daily bread. God didn't want them to be able to store it up. He said, I want you to depend upon me every day. I want you to depend on me for wisdom every day. 
I want you to depend on me for my anointing every day. I want you to de depend on me for my revelation every single day. I want you to depend on me for my health given to you every day. Don't take it for granted. Whatever you take for granted will eventually be taken away. And so you thank him for your health every day. Thank him for your life every day. Thank him for your purpose every day. You, you begin to thank God for everything that he's given you every day. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. He's called us to be a part of his kingdom. Kingdom was very, very critical to Jesus. He talked more about the kingdom of God than he talked about heaven. In fact, in the gospels alone, the word kingdom is mentioned almost 120 times because he's calling us to be kingdom people. We are of the children of light. It's a kingdom of light. It's a kingdom of light. And when we are uh, kingdoms in a part of a kingdom of light, it's like these uh, bioluminescent uh, organisms that when agitation happens, it lights up the environment. Because we're in a, in a dark world. The world has gotten to be a really dark place. Darkness is a, is, a, is a picture of ignorance. It is a picture of absurdity. It is a picture of that that defies logic and common sense. And we're in that day today. Because we need light. Arise and shine for thy Light has come. And I'm telling you, we must do the works of the one who has sent us. We're on a mission. We're on mission. We're on mission. We're on mission. We are on call. And, and I want you to understand that we are sharing this mission with Jesus. Jesus said that I must work the works of him who sent me. But we are called as a part of that call. And that's why Jesus told us in St. John chapter 14 and verse 12, Verily, verily, I tell you that whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will even do greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. I don't think that this is talking about greater insignificance. But I think it's talking about greater in number because there are more of us. But there was just one Jesus. And Jesus already was in his place, and so we don't take his place, but we are an extension of Jesus and the call that God sent on the earth for him to be able to do the works of the kingdom. That's why he gave power to his disciples to be able to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. He gave them power. Richard Biggs said that the greatest gap in life is the one between knowing and doing. The one between knowing and doing. Knowing and doing. But the call that was given to Jesus, we are a part of that call. You may not have realized that, but the moment that you were born again, you were saved and called. Saved and called. Saved and called for purpose, for the mission of God. He tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 through 11 in the Amplified, that we are God's fellow workers, his servants working together. We work with them. We are his co-laborers, co-workers. You are God's cultivated field, his garden, his vineyard, God's building. And according to the remarkable grace of God, which was given to me to prepare me for my task, like a skillful master builder, I laid a foundation and now another is building on it. But each one must be careful how he builds on it, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid. No one, no one. If anybody come preaching any other gospel, if they come preaching that you can get the works of God by any other means, I mean, it is not by tarot cards, it's not by crystals, it's not by new age, it's not by false religion. No one can lay a foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ. I want you to understand from this passage here, it tells us that we are co-workers with God. We are co-workers with God and we are graced for this work. We are grace. He has graced us. It's the divine enabling ability of God to be what God has called you to be and to do what God has called you to do. Touch somebody, tell them, I'm grace for this. I am grace for this. I am grace for this. If you're called to do something, God sends a grace for you to be able to do it as well. And then we are building a foundation that has already been laid. We are building on a foundation that has already been laid. We're not making the new foundation. We're just building on the one that's already been laid, Jesus Christ. He is our foundation. We build on him. We build on him. And we have a vital role to play, but we have no authority to change the foundation. We must remain true to it. We have no authority to change the foundation. We have to remain true to it. And we have a limited time to do our part. I must work the works of him who hath sent me while it is day, for the night is coming. Now I want you to read, uh, hear this 
St. John chapter 9 and verse 4 in the New Living Translation, we must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. You see, other manuscripts read that I must quickly carry out the task assigned me by the one who sent me. But yet many other of the texts translate that passage that we must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent me. We share in the call that was given to Jesus. We share in the assignment that was given to Jesus because we are called to do the works of Jesus. That's why he says, you shall know them by the fruit that they bear. Jesus said, you'll know that these are my disciples because they have loved one another. It's the a fruit is a, is, is a, a love is a, is a fruit. It's a fruit of the spirit that you, you know, because they'll, they'll be bearing the fruit of love. They'll be doing my work. They'll be doing my work. And it reminds us in John chapter 14 and verse 12, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the father. So we are called to that. We are called to the works of Jesus. He said in Proverbs chapter 27 and verse one, don't brag about tomorrow since you don't know what the day will bring. So leave that together. Man, man, you know, one day, one day, man, you know, my mother has so much money. I'm one day, man, I'm a, you ever heard people pontificating about the future? They just got all of these great ideas about, man, I won't be so rich, man. I won't have property here, where, man. I'm going to just be stacking cash. <laughs> now, now, what are we going to do today in preparation for that? We got to eat today. I don't want to hear anything about any fish you're going to bring home tomorrow. I got to eat today. <laughs> What's for dinner? Remember, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day. Give us today our daily bread. Our daily bread. I'm not praying for bread for tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. But today, I'm trying to eat today. I'm trying to see what's on the menu today. Today, today. Now, I will, I will admit that there are certain foods, particularly in the African-American culture, that are better the next day. Anybody ever had some greens, you know, that it's been sitting in all that seasoning and stuff and the next day it's just, but if I want to enjoy that tomorrow, I got to be letting it get seasoned today, today, today. And that's all that I'm telling you, that I got to work the works today because I want to eat good tomorrow. And so if I want to do that, I got to take care of what I need to take care of today while it is today because I may not be able to do that. And, and so when you find that people, by the time they get to retirement and then they can't really afford to retire because they didn't need to do, they didn't do what they needed to do when they needed to do it. And now they can't do what they want to do when they need some help. But you got to take care of today. It's something where the ball was dropped in the power of today while it is day there's an assignment now and I'm telling you this is a season now for you to have your prophetic watches on because you got to know the timing of the Lord this is not playtime this is the time to be sensitive because we are in a war now and when you're in a divine war you got to understand that there are kingdoms that are in conflict right now and that we have got to have our ears sensitive uh, to the, uh, the voice of the battalion in commander uh, the commander in chief uh, who is speaking to us but I'm telling you God's calling us. In this familiar uh, verse of scripture in the Old Testament in Psalm chapter 30 and verse 5, we, we know this, we've heard this, for his anger is but for a moment. You know, God doesn't hold, he doesn't hold a grudge. But notice this, his favor is for life. You ever notice that? God's favor is for life. God's favor is for life. God had favor on Joseph even when Joseph made bad decisions. He had favor on, on Jacob, even when Jacob made bad decisions. He had favor that was on David, even when David made bad decisions. But notice, his anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for life. And then notice this, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. I think he put this verse in the Bible, in the Old Testament, to remind us of this truth, that all disappointment is temporary. All disappointment is temporary. All disappointment is temporary. I, I want you to say that with me. 
all disappointment is temporary. If you've lost a job, all disappointment is temporary. If you've lost a person in your life that quits you, all disappointment is temporary. If you've been sick and set back and couldn't go to work, all disappointment is temporary. You will come out of this. The hurt will heal. You will love again. You will find a new normal. All disappointment is temporary. Weeping may endure for a night. You're coming out of your mourning season. And my God, the thing about it is that the light, I don't know what it is, but there's something about dread and terror and fear that seems as though it is exacerbated in the nighttime hours. If you get sick at night, my God, you're just waiting for the breaking of day. It just seemed to feel better if the sun is shining and the windows are open and rays are coming in. But when darkness, it treads in darkness, fear, begin, you begin to overthink that, my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die here. Nobody's going to know that I'm in here. And it magnifies. My breath is cut, cutting off. I'm not going to die in my sleep. I'm gonna, if, do I have sleep apnea now? Am I going to quit breathing? Jesus, every kind of demonic thought will start filling your mind. But when the day breaks, the moment that the sun comes up, weeping may endure for a night. The sickness, the suffering, the dread of the darkness, the moment that the light pierces that darkness and you see it, then you realize there is hope beyond the night. That all disappointment is temporary. All disappointment is temporary. That disappointment in that business deal, temporary. The disappointment of that relationship that went awry, temporary. It's all temporary. It's all temporary. There's a new day coming. There's a new day coming. There's a new day coming. God's greatest gift to you is that he let the sun go down one day and a new sun on another day. And that next day that it comes up, it's a new day. It is a new day. It is so interesting that we see in Exodus chapter 8 and verse 9 and 10. This is where Moses goes to Pharaoh. He says, you set the time. Moses replied, he says, tell me when you want me to pray for you and your officials and your people. And then you and your houses will be rid of the frogs and they will remain only in the Nile River. This is when they had, I think this was the second plague that came on Israel, I mean on Egypt. It was the plague of the frogs and the frogs were everywhere. They were in their bedrooms, they were in their bathrooms, they were in the kitchen area, they were in the living room area, they were out in the courtyard. They were all over the land, they had plagued. And now Moses goes to Pharaoh and tells him, he says, when do you want me to get, pray and get rid of these things? He says, come back on tomorrow. Now, I'm sorry. I mean, if rats and roaches are running me out of my place, I want you to come yesterday. I want, yes, sir. I mean, if my air goes out in my house on a hot, blistering day in a, when you're dealing in the south in a heat wave, I want you to be there yesterday. You think that I'm going to have a problem and I want to suffer and sleep with frogs another night? Frogs are a picture of demon spirits. They are nocturnal creatures. They're croaking and making sounds in the night when you can't see them. They're getting away with your imagination. And he's saying that, listen, you want to sleep with those things another night? You, you're not ready to get rid of your little things because, you see, there is pleasure in sin for a season. For a season. There's, there's pleasure in sin. Don't let anybody tell you there's not pleasure in sin. Sin wouldn't have so many folks if it weren't pleasure in it. But the pleasure leads ultimately to displeasure. And the very thing that you are enjoying one day, it'll have you sick the next day. And while you were feeling good and having an orgasm this day, you got a disease the next day. And if I'm going to get delivered, I want to deliver us. Give me this day. My daily bread, my daily bread, my daily bread, my daily bread. Yeah, you're saved, but you're going to have a dirty thought tomorrow. You're going to need daily bread tomorrow because a freaky thought is going to come up in you to try to take you back. That's the, de that's the danger of, of sleeping with frogs. You have flashbacks. And that's when you're going to need the Holy Ghost to come and sanctify you once again, to give him thanks because you're having a flashback. And I don't want to sleep with this another night, Moses. Pray right now, get it out now, get it out now, get it out now. You don't want 
lice crawling in your head another night. You don't want some type of insect that is going in your ear to still be there the next day. I mean, if you get a terrible toothache in the night, if the dentist could be opened at two o'clock in the morning, you would be there trying to get relief. It's Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 27 and 28. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to help them. See, we're called to serve other folks. And if you can help your neighbor now, don't say come back tomorrow and then I'll help you. You got the power to do it now. And it says, and if they deserve it, if they deserve it, if you know they're good people, then you know they're not pulling the wool over your eyes. And it's in your power to do it right now. Don't make them wait. Because if you want help, you want it now. I'm just telling you, every day, at the close of every day, these are some reflective questions that I allow to go through my mind each day. And I thought that I'd share them with you. Reflective questions. So just ask yourself daily, what have I done to help someone today? What have I done to help someone today? It keeps us aware of God's mission. It keeps us from being so selfish in what we do and what we have. Here's the next question. What is something that I am thankful for that was done to or for me today? See, you bless somebody, but now reflect on what you're thankful for that was done to you or for you. Here's the third thing. What did I learn or how did I grow today? Every day you ought to be seeking to learn something. Every day you ought to be growing. What did I learn or how did I grow today? Here's another question. What feels like a burden to me today? What feels like a burden? Talk about what burdens your heart. You know why? Because every vision is born out of a burden. Whatever burdens you, if it burdens you that people are destitute of this or that they, have, they don't have that or they need this, and then God begins to put an answer to you. You know, when, you, when you're gifted as an educator, ignorance burdens you. Seeing people unskilled, untrained burdens you. When you're a disciplinarian, it burdens you to see people who are undisciplined. So ask yourself, what feels like a burden to me today? And then ask this question, what makes me feel alive today? Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes me feel alive because what the world needs are people who have come alive to their purpose. What makes you feel alive? What makes you feel alive? What is it that you're doing when time passes by and you, know, you, you lose track of time? What makes you feel alive? What are you doing when you feel most alive? And then this question, am I spending sufficient time with people who enrich my life? Am I spending sufficient time with people who enrich my life? You know the Pareto principle, the 80-20 uh, principle? And many people make the mistake of spending 80% of their time with problem people instead of potential people and impacting people. And you need to reverse that and spend 80% of your time with potential people and impact people and only 20% of your time with problem people because you discover that the more time you spend with problem people, they still gonna have problems. Even after you've done the best and they've taken up all your time. And now you're tired and drained and they still going to be problematic the next day and the two weeks down the road and they're coming back to the same old issues and drama and you need to be spending some time with people that have the, the uh, potential that are hungry for what you have and who are ready to actually learn and grow from that and then people who have the ability to be able to speak into your life and impact you and to share some things that turn the light on and to get you fired up. So you have to find impacting people and potential people and start spending the 80% there and the 20% on the folks that are the problem people. Because you gotta be able to give back to some problematic people. And then ask this question, how have I included God in my life, in my day? How have I included God in my day? We're children of God, we're children of the kingdom of God. How have I included God in my day? How has he used me? Have I recognized the people that God has placed in my path that I'm supposed to minister to and share with in some way? And then ask this final question, what can I do better tomorrow? What can I do better tomorrow? What can I do better tomorrow? If I've only grown to this level, I'll never be able to grow if I'm afraid that if I add five more pounds, it's gonna break my back. 
You got to be willing to push the envelope and press beyond your comfort zone. You know why? Because the fears that you don't face become your limits. The fears that you don't face, they become your limits. The fears that you don't face become your limits. If you fear the stinger that's in the bee, you'll never get the honey. You got to risk getting stung and being swollen if you want to get some of the honey. And so the fears that you don't face, they actually become your limits. The way that I think about fear is this, is that fear is nothing more than an invitation to evolve. Fear is an invitation for you to become more, to broaden your horizons. Fear is an invitation to grow and to explore and find some things beyond what you have already mastered. And if you don't leave the comfort zone, if you don't leave, if you don't ever see how high you can jump, you'll never know. And if you don't ever stretch, stretching increases your capacity to move. Stretch, stretch. God will always stretch you when he commands you to do something. It will be beyond what you can control because God says, I'm giving you an assignment that you need my help in order to make become a reality. So it is that stretching. It's, a, it's an invitation to actually be able to grow, an invitation for you to be able to evolve. And this is the thing that I have discovered is that the Holy Spirit is most active in your life when you are moving outside of your comfort zone. You got to get outside of your comfort zone. You got to face your fears on today and say, I'm going to do it today because you've been putting it off. Anything that you really don't want to do or you're so apprehensive about it, we have a way of relegating that to the future by saying someday, one day, and one day never comes. And it just keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And God is saying, listen, you're not going to live forever. I want you to get this done. And when he says this day, this day, it begins to set urgency in our life. There are certain things that we can never get done until it becomes urgent. Yeah. It's amazing. There are certain things. Now, you can know you got a school paper due. You can know it for weeks. But when you know that thing is due in the morning, it's amazing how the urgency of weeks can now be crystallized into a focus and staying up all night and trying to take no dose and drinking coffee and all of this kind of stuff to be able to get her done. That power is called urgency. And that's why Jesus said that I must work the works of him who have sent me. I'm under urgency now. I don't have but 33 years. But look at what he accomplished in 33 years. Look at the mark in history that he has made that can never be erased. We are all gathered today in his name because of 33 years my god it's the power of now now our time is now now somebody shout now. now when you really understand now now is nothing more than needs over wants needs over wants what do i need to do now over what do i want to do right now because if you do what you need to do when you need to do it you can do what you want to do when you want to do it if i just do it needs over want now needs over wants, needs over wants, needs over wants. I want it now. What do you need to do now in order to be able to have what it is that God is calling you for? I've recited this verse of my life, every, uh, this verse of scripture in my life ever since I was a young teenager in Psalm 118, verse 24 and 25. This is the day. Este es el día en que el Señor actuó. Recosijémonos y alegrémonos en él. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, he says, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This only time that you can work is in the day that God has given you today. I can't work yesterday and I can't work tomorrow, but I can do it today. This is the day when you wake up in the morning and plant your feet on the ground. This is the day when your eyes open in the morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Listen. You're responsible for your attitude. 
Your attitude is like a flat tire. You're not going any place until you change it. You get to choose your attitude. You get to choose it. So I will rejoice. I tell my own attitude every day. I will find something in this day over which I can rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will be glad in it. I choose my attitude. I'm choosing in this day. I choose my attitude. I tell my soul. I tell my mind. I choose it and say we will rejoice and be glad. We're going to be glad in this thing. If you got to do something, you may as well be glad about it. If you got to follow a call, you may as well be glad about it. I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice. Rejoicing is what you can do when you don't even feel like doing it. You do it. That's the way you keep joy full is that you rejoice. You rejoice. Rejoice every day, every day, every day of your life. You ought to rejoice. 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 It is refilling up your joy. Refilling your joy. Two things that are impossible for the brain, the human brain to, to deal with. You cannot entertain anxiety and gratitude at the same time. So when I, the moment that I bring thanksgiving in, the moment that I bring thanksgiving in, the moment that I bring thanksgiving in, bam, there it is. Uh, anxiety begins to leave. You can't be anxious, full of fear, and grateful at the same time. Lord, I thank you that this is the day that you've made. In it, I will rejoice. I can't have my fear taken over me if I'm full of gratitude. If gratitude has filled my heart, filled my heart. And so I've, I've, I've awakened with that every single day since I was a young teenager, that this is the day. This is the day. Today, this is the day that the Lord has made. And in it, I will rejoice and I'm going to be exceeding glad. But then here's verse 25. Notice this. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Listen, if you've got somebody that needs to be saved in your family, when do you want them to be saved? Save now. Save now. When do you want your spouse to be saved? Save now. When do you want your son or your daughter to be saved? Save now. When do you want your grandchildren to be saved? Save now. Your nieces and your nephews. Save now. Your cousins. Save now. Mom and them. Save now. You need them to be saved now. Save now. Save now this day. Save now. Save now. And then notice, send prosperity now. I mean, if you need a blessing, when do you need it? Now. You want God to bless you with something? When do you want it? Now. Send prosperity now. Prosper my soul now. Prosper my mind now. Prosper my finances now. I don't know about you, but I want my prosperity now. But he put an order there. Save now, then send prosperity now. Because if he sends prosperity before he saves you, your prosperity is going to be spent on foolishness. So save now. There's a priority. Save now, Lord. Save now. Save now. Please don't pray for God to prosper you before he saves you. Because you won't know what to do with the blessing. You, you, will, you will squander the blessing. Save now. Prosper now. Send prosperity now. Save now. Send prosperity now. It's, it's a double-fold prop, uh, uh, proposition as we are praying. And it started off with saying, this is the day. This is the day. Today. Today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will be rejoice. This is not just about me. This is for the collective body because God is bringing us into a community. And he said, listen, this is not just about my being glad. This is about us because what God does when he comes he makes us glad when the righteous rule the people rejoice and so it's about this is the day God this is the day because we come together as a community of light we let our light shine and we start discovering the works of Jesus and you need to be asking yourself what do the works of Jesus look like in my area of profession on my job in my neighborhood in my school what do the works of Jesus look like and say Lord give me a divine strategy show me God what I'm supposed to do show me what I'm supposed to speak Show me what my hands are supposed to create. Show me what I'm supposed to be walking into, Jesus. And, we, and so we're asking, this is the day, God. I need you to do it today. This is the day. Do it today. Do this today. I want to do my portion today, my daily bread today. This is the day that the Lord has made. He's given me this opportunity. He's made another chance for me to be able to move. And in it, I'm going to rejoice. We will rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Save now, O oh Lord. Save now, O oh Lord. 
Send prosperity now. Save now. Send prosperity. Somebody needs to be praying save now. There's another one who's already saved and they're saying, God, send prosperity now. I don't know which one you need today. But I declare that if you're a person who needs to be saved today, you have a backslider that's gotten away from God, I want you to just meet me here at this altar. I want you to just get up and meet me at the altar. Save now. Somebody's been praying, Lord, save my child now. Save my son. Save my daughter. You got to do this. Don't, don't put it off another day. Save now. Save now. Save now. Save now. Save now. I need to, I'm telling you, if you need to be delivered, you need to get your deliverance now. You need to be redeemed now. You need to have your soul uh, just purified and ridded of the demonic now. Some of you don't want to sleep with your frogs another night. You've had tormenting thoughts. You've had nightmares. You've had restlessness. You've had a nervous twitch. You've had a disorder going on in your stomach area, your digestive tract. You want to be delivered now. Send now. Send now. Send now. Save now, Lord. Save now. Save now. Save now. Save now. Save now. May I remind you of this, that no prayer before God ever dies. Prayer never dies. Some of you, the prayers of your mothers and your fathers, your grandparents, and may already be in glory, but those prayers are still living today. And some of you alive today by the grace of God. God's mercy is on your life. He's been extending you, but he says, it's time now for you to get right. There's an urgency in the Holy Ghost. There's an urgency that where he's calling men and women to come and, and say, now it's not time to play church. This is not time to try to do a thing that is politically correct. He says, I want you to get right, get right church, because it's time to go home. You get right church and we gotta do what's right. We wanna get right, we wanna get right. We wanna say, Lord, I need you to save me. I need you to save my marriage. I need you to save my mind. I need you to save my health, God. I need you to save my strength, God. I need a salvation that only comes from you. The word salvation here is the word saved. It means so-so. It means to be healed. It means to be delivered. It means to be set free. That whatever is in you that is wrong, that God in the moment that he saves you, it's just as easy for him to save you as it is for him to heal you. Whatever painful memories. Somebody's mind in the memories of a painful trauma that has happened in your life is being healed by the supernatural power of God. He's redeeming. Only God, only God can go back into your history and heal a painful past. Only God can take the sting out of it. Only God. That trauma that has messed you up emotionally, that has left you, the abuse, the molestation that happened. Hey! Whoop! My kid, fashidiotoma. In the name of Jesus, somebody needs to be saved and healed and delivered. It's here for you today, 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 today. Don't put it off another day. Now is the time. Now, the Bible says now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now, 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 now. That you can begin it and release the healing power of God the saving power of God, the delivering power of God to start flowing in your life, even at this moment, even at this moment, even at this moment. He's the same God that was and is and is to come. God is going back now. He's going back and healing stuff that mess you up. He's healing it. He's healing the abuse. He's healing the neglect. He's healing the abandonment issues that you're dealing with. He's even coming into your life, going back into your memories now and healing rejection because some of you have been dealing with a spirit of rejection. You've been so dealing with this wondering what's wrong with me. He's healing the rejection. And I want you to know today that you're accepted in the beloved. You are accepted in the beloved of God. Today, 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 save now. Save now. Save now, God. It's our desire. Lord, save now. Save now. Save now. Save now, save now, save now, save now. I like to see the voice of the Lord that's out there. He's got a call. He's got a call. He said, respond to my voice now. Respond, 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 respond now. He's just calling. I don't know why, but there are three women that God is, is calling. You've been in a... A disreputable kind of background. And the Lord is calling you to say, come on, it's, it's time for you to come out of that. He's calling you today. He's calling you. I want to encourage you to get up out of your seat and come on.
He loves you. He sees worth in you. He sees value in you. At this day, 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 come on. He knows your story. Today is not a blame game day. This is a day of deliverance. My God, in the name of Jesus, 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 he's calling you. 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 There's another woman that's been here and you've been seducing folks through your social media. It's time for that day to be over. It's a new day. It's a new day. I want to I want to call you. Call you. Come out. Come out. Come on, let him save you. Let him deliver you. Come on, there's delivering power in this house today in the name of Jesus. I know that I hear that very strongly by the Holy Ghost. The last time that I heard a word like this was nearly 20 years ago. And there were three prostitutes in the, in the house. I didn't know it, but the Holy Ghost knew it. And I felt an urgency in my spirit for them to get saved that day. And all three of them came to the altar and got gloriously saved. And one of them who was at the altar, when she began to quit her life, she went to her pimp and said, I can't do this anymore. He murdered her and they found her body that Tuesday behind a dumpster. And I just want you to know that God knows your story and he's not here to try to play nor to threaten you. He's here to save you because he loves you. There's a deep kindness in the heart of God that some of you are in a precarious place in life. You're dealing with capricious people, dangerous. And today is a day of salvation. If you're not right with God, I want to say that's time at the altar right now. While it is day, the sun is moving. It's moving. It's moving. Shoot my knee, I create more shot. You're going to break yourself down. You're going to tear yourself down if you try to go back to the vomit out of which God is delivering you. But if you step today, if you step today, God will set you free by the power of God. Step into his power now. Step into this moment of now. You've lived under this shame. God will strip the shame away. Ha! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. 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 He loves you so much. My God, he loves you. He sees such worth and value in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the dawn of a new day. The dawn of a new day. The dawn of a new day. Ah! Oh, my God. The dawn of a new day. Thank you, Jesus. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. Let me just tell you that when the glory of the Lord is present, nobody has to lay hands on you for you to get delivered. His presence is light. His presence is light. Jesus is the light of the world and he put a light in us. And not only is he light, but he's also life. And you find that life in the light. Come out of the shadows. Come out of the shadows. Rekumudikitas. I heard him say, come out, Kiributa, Tumbe de Kapas. Come out of the light, the shadows. If you know you've been in a shadowy life, I want to encourage you today to just obey God and come, come. This is not a judgment place. This is a deliverance place. This is a place of healing. This is a place of, of love. This is a place of acceptance. This is a place 
a famine. If you've been in that shadowy place of darkness, I want to invite you. Step into the light today. Step into the light. You'll find something shedding off of you. Shedding off of you. Shedding off of you. Come out of the shadows. I hear a call in the spirit just saying, come out of the shadows. Shekrite bosia. Tumba Come out of the shadowy place. Come out of the shadowy place. Come out of the shadowy place. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of the shadowy place. Come out. Come out. Come out. My, he's waiting on you. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Step out of the shadowy place. Step into the light. Something is shifting and falling off of you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Refeshiro Borashia. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. upon his people the presence of God is resting on his people now he's breaking the very thing that's been breaking you he's washing he's cleansing he's cleaning house himself is working the altar today.
stretch a hand toward these folks. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That you called each one of these today and gave them an ability to be able to hear your voice. Something on the inside of them resonated with your call. And what you call, God, you you capacitate and then you commission. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your power will so rest upon them in strength and manifest through deliverance in their life that the very things that held them in bondage, it held them captive. And now you by your own spirit, Lord, will capacitate them to go in the strength and in the power of your spirit. As you move in and do a work in them, sustain them. Anoint a love within their heart for the word of God, for prayer, for regular attendance in your house. Expel every frog-like thing this day. Save now. Save now. Heal now. Deliver now. And prosper their souls now. May your hand, God, do the work that is undeniable. Set a fire on the inside of each one of them, God, that they might tell others what marvelous things that you will have done on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit that is moving in their hearts even now. Healing, restoring, renewing, and making brand new servants, God, through which you will manifest your work. May they join you now in that great work of your kingdom. We hope that you enjoyed that message. Don't forget to like and subscribe and then press the notification bell so that you don't miss another one of our videos. And if you want to partner with us, click the Give Now button. Thank you for what you do.